in both these passages, in both this uh, scene from Paul's trial before Felix, the governor, and in uh, the raising of, the, of Jairus's daughter, the ruler of the synagogue, we have the theme of the resurrection of the dead, of the bringing of life out of death. And as Paul makes clear, this is the Christian distinctive, the belief of the resurrection of the dead. And now he says, now I share this belief with, with many of the people who are accusing me, but it's really the resurrection of the dead for which I am on trial because we believe that the resurrection of the dead has been uh, given to us through Jesus Messiah, the crucified Lord, that through Jesus, death itself has been transformed from total defeat and uh, a descent into despair and nothingness has been transformed into really a door, a, a passage into eternal life. And that is the difference that we as Christians bring into the world, that death does not have the last word, word that the resurrection is everything. The fact that the dead can come back to life in Jesus changes everything. And to the world, it's something laughable, right? When we can, we as Christians can speak into the face of suffering, into the face of death, into the face of despair, we can speak words of hope, words of joy, words of comfort, and there'll be those in the world who like those who are the professional mourners in around the house that Jesus enters, they, they will laugh. It is laughable to those who cannot uh, trust in God's life from death power. But that is precisely the good news that we are called to bring as Christians, the good news to, to which we testify through word and deed that God can bring life from death. That is the difference. Everything depends on that. If we don't have that, that's, that's it. That's the ball game. We, and there'd be no reason to put us on trial, right? We would be no threat to anyone if, without the resurrection of the dead. We'd just be like, let's all be nicer to one another kind of people. We, now, of course, that's not a bad thing to be nice to each other. But our true message is death is defeated. And that's a very threatening thing to those whose power is based on death. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Your Excellency, because of you, we have enjoyed in peace and reforms have been made for this people because of your foresight. We welcome this in every way and everywhere with utmost gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have, in fact, found this man a pestilent fellow, an agitator among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn from him concerning everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting that all this was true. When the governor motioned to him to speak, Paul replied, I cheerfully make my defense, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation. As you can find out, it is not more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not find me disputing with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd either in the synagogues or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you the charge that they now bring against me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way, which they call a sect, I worship the God of our ancestors, believing everything laid down according to the law or written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Therefore, I do my best always to have a clear conscience toward God and all people. Now, after some years, I came to bring alms to my nation and to offer sacrifices. While I was doing this, they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia, 
they ought to be here before you to make an accusation, if they have anything against me. Or let these men here tell what crime they had found when I stood before the council, unless it was this one sentence that I called out while standing before them. It is about the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. But Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the hearing with the comment, when Lysias the tribune comes down, I will decide your case. Then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not to prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel. While Jesus was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 